in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed by has he given to us these great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and then last week we looked further into the subject of knocking by understanding the power of relationships for you to knock means that you do not have the key but you need the door opened and you must be able to understand strategic relationships otherwise the door will not be open we examine the parable of Jesus buttressing on knocking and asking that there was a man who came to his friend by night and said friend please arise and give me three loaves another friend has come and I'm about to be embarrassed because I do not have supplies and he says sorry you need to leave it is late I cannot wake up and we did look at that scripture that under a certain condition the friend woke up and gave him as many as he desired please do take out time to listen to these teachings they are meant to give us light true light indeed hallelujah tonight's teaching will bless you yet again and i'm trusting that it will add to our knowledge and strengthen us in the spirit giving us capacity to access open doors in the name of jesus it's a very interesting teaching tonight because now you will begin to learn how to manage doors that are opened um, it is one thing to contend to get doors opened but if and when those doors are opened it's important that we are equipped with the intelligence to know how to manage open doors and to know that which is expected if and when doors are open so are you ready for tonight matthew chapter 6 please deliver us from evil i'm teaching tonight on the subject deliver us from evil as an attempt to help us understand the implication of open doors it is one thing to desire that doors be opened but there are prophetic implications if and when doors do open and many believers are not equipped holistically to understand the prophetic implication of open doors that every time doors are open unto a man in the spirit doors are open unto a man across the cosmos there are implications and we must be equipped to know what to do with the challenges that come as a result of open doors matthew chapter 6 please let's begin our reading from verse 5 we know this as the Lord's Prayer when you read Luke's synoptic account it was the disciples who came to Jesus and said teach us to pray they said as John taught his disciples that was not a subject of prayerlessness I have taught you their their request was accuracy in prayer they were prayerful people but they discerned and they discovered that their prayers did not produce results. There was something about the character and the structure of the prayers of Jesus. And they said, Jesus, we're tired of shadow boxing in the place of prayer. Teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. So Jesus began to lay a few foundations about hypocrisy and so on and so forth. Now let's go to verse 6. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 6. It says, but when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door pray to your father which is in secret and thy father which is in secret shall reward you openly verse 7 now 
He says, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard because of their much speaking. Verse, be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Verse 9, after this manner, now pay attention. He didn't say by this recitation. He was showing a spiritual protocol to prayer. The recitation may be profitable, but the power is not in the chanting or the recitation. That this right here is a ladder that captured within it is a code that can help men accent realms of prayer. Are we together? I'm not necessarily teaching on prayer, but this is to lay a foundation and then we get to our subject. He now says, pray after this manner. Number one, our father. I've taught you again, but let me recap. Our father means that when you approach God, you must approach him with an understanding that he is Abba. The word Abba means source, sustainer, protector, defender. That means if you approach God with a mindset of other alternatives, your prayer is already corrupted. You must approach him knowing that except and unless he helps you, help cannot come from any other place. Are we together? Our Father. Number two, it says, which art in heaven. That means faith will be required in your approach to prayer because you are discussing with a spirit that is in a dimension that is not earthly. Are we together? He is everywhere, but which art in heaven. And if, in as much as you are seated with Christ, but physically speaking, at the point where the need is required, is at this domain of his kingdom. So you will need to understand the subject of faith. Number three, hallowed be your name, that you approach him with the spirit of reverence, paying attention to the various dimensions that are captured in his office. Because one of the ways that we learn God are through his names. The names of God represent the multifaceted dimensions of God that are captured in his names, that you approach him with the spirit of reverence. Number 10, verse 10 now. Thy kingdom come. Notice that there are six points captured in Jesus' prayer. Three have to do with God and three have to do with man. For God, it is hallowed be your name, his name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So his name, his kingdom, and his will. And then when it has to do with man, your daily bread, the forgiveness of sins, and then deliverance from evil. Are we together now? Six points captured in the prayers of Jesus. Then he says, let's go back to verse 12, please. Or 11, where did we stop? So we continue from there. Give us 10. Let's start afresh. Thy kingdom come, he says, and your kingdom only comes when your will is done in earth as it is in heaven. Remember, everywhere the will of God is accurately executed, his kingdom comes. And the will of God is captured in his word as revealed by the spirit and as written in scripture. Are we together now? That when the will of God finds expression, his kingdom comes within that sphere. He says in earth, the first earth being you, the earthen vessel, and then your environment. Verse 11 now, it says give us this day it is amazing how jesus is teaching that god is very meticulous and he's not only concerned about your future he's concerned about this day the fatherly character of god is such that he does not just focus on the future alone every day matters to him he said give us this day our daily bread your bread means all that is necessary for your sufficiency as far as your kingdom adventure is concerned are we together? Wisdom is bread. Favor is bread. Relationships is bread. He said, give us this day. That which is needed for my supplies, for my sufficiency. Are we together? Verse 12. It says, and forgive us our debts or trespasses as we forgive our debtors. Now verse 13. It says, lead us not into temptation. I'm not teaching about the first part. Otherwise, we would have a very serious discussion to do there because when you read this from the King James expression, uh, it seems to negate other aspects of scripture. God does not lead people in temptation. Are we together? 
The Bible says, and every man, Apostle James was teaching, he says, when he's tempted, let him not say, I was tempted of God, for God does not tempt men with evil. Remember that every man is tempted according to his lust. So he says, lead us not into temptation. He was talking about something entirely different that was not properly captured in the translation. But here is my point of emphasis for tonight. He says, but deliver us from evil. Jesus is teaching the people how to pray, that it should be captured within the context of your prayer, the prayer to be delivered from evil. Something will always happen to you if your daily bread has come. There is an implication to the arrival of your daily bread. Are we together now? Notice the order that when you reverence God on the strength of that, you have a right to place a demand that I should be given my daily bread immediately daily bread comes he begins to talk of many many things forgiveness avoidance of temptation and deliverance from trouble all tied to the arrival of daily bread are we together now there are many troubles and challenges that come into the life of the believer only on account of open doors most people have this understanding that the moment you are not excelling in the spirit, that is the only time when challenges can come and buffet you, but that there is a dimension of troubles and challenges that befall a believer on account of your excelling in the spirit and on account of the doors that have now been opened unto you. And if you do not understand that such a reality exists in the spirit as you'll be learning, you will be ignorant on how to manage open doors and that which was meant to be a blessing ends up becoming a curse. There are many people who have no business with certain troubles except and unless that certain doors were opened and they were not holistically mentored to know what to do with open doors. Are we learning now? So... There are battles in life that only open doors bring. Once your door is closed, you do not even know that such battles exist. It will take your doors open to now be exposed to that reality of life. Let's look at a scripture and then I would now begin to discuss. In Acts chapter 16, are we learning already? Verse 11, Acts chapter 16, please. Give us from verse 11. The Bible says, not verse 1, 11, yes. It says, therefore, speaking now about um, the apostles, it says, therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to all of that name, and the next day to Neapolis, verse 12. And from thence to Philippi. Now watch this. They are right, Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. Let's continue. It says, and on the Sabbath, we went out into the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted hither. He's, he's narrating a story now. And a certain woman, so they went out and found a woman called Lydia. The Bible called her a seller of purple. She was a wealthy woman, a woman obviously of royalty and grace. And the Bible says she was of the city of Thyatria and she worshiped God. When she had us, her heart was opened and she attended to us unto the things that were spoken of Paul. Verse 15. The Bible says, and when she was baptized and her household, she besought us saying, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house. Does that look like an open door? She opened the door of opportunity and said, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Verse 16. While they stayed with her, enjoying the blessings that they had now received, a right hand of fellowship in Philippi, the Bible says, a time came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying. 17. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are servants of the Most High God. Can you imagine the accuracy of our suit saying? Which show us the way of salvation. Absolutely nothing wrong about that statement. And this, 
did she for many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. 19. You would call this a display of the power of God. You would call this an opportunity to see Jesus revealed even in Philippi. Now, this was a man who had secured favor with Lydia. And now this was an opportunity to bring fame to the name of Jesus. The Bible says when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. What a demon could not do. The human beings who are now angry are now about to bring the apostles in trouble. It didn't take more than a minute to speak a word and that demon left the woman. Now trouble is about to come as a result of this opportunity that has been opened. The Bible says they drew them to the marketplace unto the rulers, verse 20, and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Notice the intelligence of these guys. They never said they came and stopped us from making money. Are we together now? They said these guys being Jews, this is the trouble that they brought. And they went straight to the judicial system. And they said, listen, we need help from the judicial system to punish these people because they are Jews. They are bringing trouble to our city. Reading to 24. Let's finish up. 21. They said, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Look at the intelligence of these guys. The whole goal was not an advocacy for the purity of the Rome, the Roman people. The goal was an annoyance because certain things were happening to these guys. And now, because the liberty of the spirit was being expressed within that place, there were repercussions to it. The Bible says they teach customs that were not profitable for us to receive being Romans. Verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes. Can you imagine the anger? and commanded to beat them. 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, don't forget that these men who are going through this trouble are anointed men. The anointing was demonstrated a few moments ago in the presence of a lady with the spirit of divination. And here, after that kind of thing, you thought the next story would be an interesting crusade, or the next thing would be an interesting celebration where they would say, finally, we have gotten these people. How do you reconcile stripes with the manifestation of the supernatural? That right after a fantastic miracle, only God knows how many people had been defrauded by their divination. Now the apostles brought liberty and they were about to pay for it. They cast them into prison, charging the jailer, to keep them safely. Verse 24. The Bible says, Who haven't received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Let's stop there for now. Now you understand what I mean by there are certain battles and certain challenges that you have no business even knowing about their existence except and unless you rise and ascend to certain dimensions. Listen, this already is a message that ministers maturity so that in dealing with people, you will have the discernment to understand that when God tells you to pray for all men, you have no idea of the existence of the battles, the battles that exist at certain realms and certain strata of life. For as long as you've not gotten a job, you may never understand the possibility of jealousy towards an excelling staff. So when someone is telling you, look, it looks like something happens in, you cannot relate because you are surrounded by too much kindness. And because that level of breakthrough has not come, you've not captured that possibility in your mind. Are we together? There are many people whose innocence today is not because they are free from trouble. They've not risen to the realm that makes that trouble necessary in their life. Are we together now? There are battles in life that only open doors bring. Pay attention. 
The second thing I want you to know is that the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed, the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed will always react negatively to growth and lifting. Let me take it again. That the nature of the fallen man and the nature of the believer in Christ who has not been transformed will by default react negatively when in the presence of lifting or in the presence of rising. Please pay attention to this. This has nothing to do with being good or bad. That enshrined as a weakness in the nature of the fallen man and then the believer who has not contended for sufficient transformation, there is a tendency that is enshrined within all men as unbelievers and believers who have not been transformed by the Spirit, that they will always eventually react negatively if and when in the presence of growth, in the, pros in the presence of excellence. That means knowing this already prepares you to know that your rising will have a repercussion. Are we together now? I have taught you that the highest psychological need of every man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel appreciated, and the need to feel significant. So if an individual, for instance, is stunted at a level and does not seem to make progress, and here comes another individual or a group of individuals who are excelling perpetually and in an ever-increasing way. I'm saying it's a natural response in the fallen man to now begin to exhibit elements of envy and jealousy and bitterness. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You will understand the implication of Jesus' prayer. Jesus is teaching us, pay attention every time your daily bread arrives. Pay attention the moment that mantle lands upon your life. Pay attention the moment the doors begin to open. Pay attention the moment the promotion comes. Pay attention the moment the ministry begins to excel. Because as you are learning now, open doors have implications. Are we together? Very, very powerful and very important. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. Nobody else puts it better than the apostle himself. Apostle Paul, from his own experience, this man who is teaching this had been lashed because of open doors. So he's not writing cunningly devised fables. Are we together? He's writing as a product of the things he had seen, the things he had heard, unfortunately the things even his body had handled. He said, for a great door, an effectual is opened unto me. And there are how many? The adversaries are many as the doors. A great door, an effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Please look up. Let me tell you this. You see, most believers, because of the way the kingdom is structured, if you have the advantage of being raised from a family that is very, uh, a family of believers, even if morally um, sound alone, or you have the opportunity to be shielded early, within a church or a prophetic covering that shields you from a lot of things. Chances are excellent that in your learning God, and most times we men of God must take responsibility because in mentoring people sometimes we shield them from understanding the reality of the cosmos as it is. So there is a mindset that the average believer has that in the face of real life situations, they cannot seem to relate with it. Because now you grew up in a family where everyone is greeting you, everyone is saying, God bless you. Even the person you call wicked still prays and fasts and is kind. You see that now? And so chances are excellent that we think that is the view of life holistically. Then when we have the opportunity to now step out, we begin to see other dimensions to life and men and living that is foreign to our training. That's why many believers do not last. They excel in church. But now when they step into the cosmos, they've not been equipped with the intelligence to know how to navigate in light of these realities. Now you understand what I just said. 
that the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed will always react negatively to growth and lifting. This is very powerful. What then does it mean to deliver? To deliver means to save. To deliver means to rescue. To deliver means to set free. In the simplest expression, to deliver means to save, to salvage. To deliver means to rescue. To deliver means to set free. Very quickly, the Bible teaches us that there are three levels of evil. Three levels of evil. We have another series, and so we'll take time to deal with that. But just for you to have an understanding, there are three levels of evil that the Bible mandates that believers must contend for deliverance from. Number one, the first level of evil is Satan and wicked spirits. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, three levels of evil that were mandated to contend for deliverance from. Satan and wicked spirits. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, here's what it says. It says, be sober, Apostle Peter is teaching us now, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So Satan is perpetually seeking whom he may devour. Are we together now? It says, be sober, be vigilant. It never calls the devil your friend. It never calls the devil an ally. In fact, the Bible calls him many things, including the thief and now your adversary. Are we together? So the first level of evil that we must contend for deliverance from is Satan and wicked spirits. Are you ready for number two? The second level of evil that the Bible says to contend for deliverance from is wicked and unreasonable men. Write it down, please. Wicked and unreasonable men. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, we'll read from verse 1 to 3. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 to 3. Wicked and unreasonable men. Finally, brethren, he says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Verse 2. It says, and that we may be delivered. Is that in your Bible? He's saying, pray for us. We are apostles, we are men of God, but we still need your prayer. That we be delivered not only from Satan, but that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Why? He said, for all men have not faith. I wish we could look at this from NIV or NLT. One of the versions will say that all men are not believers. He says, pray for us. NLT now. He said, pray too that we be rescued from wicked and evil people. The apostle is saying, scattered across your environment are such people. Not everyone is like that, but there are people like that. Are we together? It says, for not everyone is a believer. This is a very powerful information that you need to have and understand. It should not plant antagonism, but is, is an information that should create a garrison of defense within your mind. That in your environment, you will always find this man. For not everyone is a believer. Back to my illustration about the naivety of many Christians. Because the believer is mandated and the atmosphere, the kingdom culture demands that the law of love is what prevails among people. So many believers haven't been raised by Christian families, Christian homes are largely naive as to the reality of this world. The Bible says, we know that we are of God, he says, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world, not Nigeria, the whole world, not your village, the whole world, not Africa. The whole world lieth in wickedness. That means if you ever run out of any region in search for safety from Satan, you made a wrong mistake. The key is not a translocation. The key is to understand this system. Are we together now? That means if you run from Abuja and go to Lagos in hope that you are running from Satan, by the intelligence of scripture, that is a futile venture because Satan is so energetic, he can run to and fro the whole earth. 
Now, I don't know how many pilots can do that successfully, but this guy has mastered the art of movement. He is not weak. Satan is testifying before God about Job from whence comest thou, and he said, From toe and fro the air. You should have a healthy, maybe not honor, but an appreciation for the presence of such a determined person. <laughs> a spirit that sustains the zeal to go to and fro the earth. It means the potential or the probability of meeting you is 100%. <laughs> he will find you somewhere. <laughs> Are we together? Amen. Wicked and unreasonable men. He says, for not all men have faith. Have this at the back of your mind, ladies and gentlemen, that when doors open, among the many people you will meet through open doors are wicked and unreasonable men. Wicked and unreasonable men. In Genesis chapter 37, let's look at a few things just to buttress on that. I'm discussing three evils that the Bible mandates will be delivered from one Satan and wicked spirits, two now wicked and unreasonable men. Give us Genesis chapter 37, please. We'll read from verse 3 to 11, then we'll jump. I just want you to watch a story. Follow very closely. Now Israel, Jacob now, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Next verse. He says, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than the brethren, notice the progression. What was the, the reason for the hatred? The father's love for him, right? He had access to the father's heart, and the Bible says they hated him. That was an elementary level, and could not speak peaceably unto him. So if you were Joseph, you would notice that after a healthy commendation from your father, you would suddenly begin to receive ill treatments and antagonisms from your brothers wondering what did I do wrong verse 5 and Joseph dreamed a dream say open doors and he told his brethren and they hated him yet the more are you seeing it growing now they started by hating him and then now a dream is added to that love again and the reaction they hated him the more verse 6 and he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Brotherly naivety took him to complicate his matter. He went to share his dream. For behold, verse 7 now, We were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. Hmm. Verse 8. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? And shall thou indeed have dominion over us now? And they hated him yet the more. So we see hatred level one. Then a dream comes the more. Then he shares the dream. Then the more. Are we together? Continue the reading please, verse nine. And he dreamed yet another dream. And told it to his brethren. Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, now pay attention please. <laughs> the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. I wish I had time, would have discussed what this meant. Verse 10. And he told it even to his father now. And to his brethren. And even his father now was getting concerned. The father rebuked him and said, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Verse 11. And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the sayings. I'm a prophet. This boy is not just dreaming. Something is happening here that we do not understand. Jump to verse 18 wicked and unreasonable men and when they saw him afar off the father now sent him to come and check the welfare of the brothers even before he came near unto them the bible says they conspired against him to slay him question 
what did Joseph do that was wrong? He was loved, then he dreamt, then he dreamt again, then he dreamt again. Are we together? So the question you've been asking, what did I do? Here is the answer. You dreamt and you listened to a message and you paid attention and you prayed and you fasted and you rose in the spirit. It was interpreted as an offense in the spirit because it's now, listen carefully. <clears throat> Let's read to 20, 18 to 20. When they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. 19. It says, and they said to one another, behold, this dreamer cometh. 20. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Now, notice that those that were talking were people of the same bloodline. They were his brothers. That is how far. You do not know the potential that is in the unregenerate man to fight growth. Most people take for granted the reaction of success in the face of people who are not saved or not transformed. The Bible is teaching you here that you need to be careful. Don't just jump through open doors and be smiling. While you enter open doors, make sure you begin to prepare and fortify yourself with knowledge. I guarantee you, except it is not an open door, there will be adversaries. Hallelujah. Did we finish 20? Let's throw him into the pit. And then we will say some evil beast that devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. The whole battle was about dreams, not the person. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's the mantle that is on you. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's a mandate. Listen very carefully. The prophecy that is on you is what is attracting many things you do not know. The only way to abort that battle is to throw away the prophecy. But for as long as it is on you, listen carefully, for as long as it is on you, I guarantee you by the integrity of scripture, there are battles that you will have to learn how to fight. You will have to be like the men of David, trained at the cave of Adullam. You must know how to hold the sword and to fight with valiance until you are able to throw 800 people and still stand with your sword. Otherwise, some doors will become a curse to you. Not even Jesus was spared of this. Out of a family where nobody rises, suddenly the apostolic and the prophetic mantle lands on your life. And you start to share dreams and visions. And you said it like a joke and it happened. You said it like a joke and it happened. You said, my sister will get a job. They laughed and it happened. After three days, something will start being wrong with your shoes. Something will start being wrong with your hair. Why did you come home late? And you are wondering what happened. There is a reaction from the spirit. Listen to me. If you do not know this, life will teach you a lesson that will take many years to learn. Open doors have implications. Are we together? There are three evils that every man will fight, provided doors open. One, Satan himself and evil spirits. Number two, wicked and unreasonable men. Very quickly, number three, the flesh. <laughs> the flesh. Oh, whoever told you that it is only Satan you have to fight. The flesh. Let me tell you something about the flesh. In my opinion, of all these three evils, this is the most vicious of them. Because you can cast evil spirits. You can run away from wicked and unreasonable men. But this flesh you see, it remains with you and the Bible says to crucify it and you will die daily. The flesh. <laughs> Romans 7 from verse 18. For I know that in me, again, our Paul is speaking now, that is in my flesh, 
dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, he says, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Let's continue. It says, for the good that I would, that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not want to do, that is what I do. Verse 8, 20, let's continue. It says, now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 21. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. 22. For I delight in the law of God sincerely in the inward man. Are you seeing the conflict now? But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. 24. It says, O wretched man that I am, an apostle that casted demons without talking twice, is now expressing frustration. What kind of an enemy is this that you cannot cast out with one word? O wretched man that I am, he says, who shall deliver me? Paul is crying, is there someone who can deliver me from this body of death? Listen, the flesh is so vicious in its operation that it reveals itself in levels according to your growth. There are many times that the flesh will lie low for many years and you would flatter yourself into thinking you have attained unto liberty without pressing in the spirit. It is simply because certain doors have not been opened. If you are not Solomon the king, you have no business with Bathsheba. Are we together now? Yes. If you are not Samson the warrior, you have no problem with Delilah. No. Are we together now? If you are not Abraham the one who should be the father of nations, you have no problem with the frustration of barrenness that will lead to the birth of Ishmael. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. As you rise, your flesh has a way of reinventing strategies that is able to attack and challenge you at the level of your growth. There are some temptations that will never come to your life when you are broke. It's not that you are delivered from them. The temptation cannot work because what it feeds on to get to you is not even there. Are we together now? Please listen very carefully. If you have not been given an appointment in an office where there is a cash flow of one billion naira every week, the, you will think that you have immunity against bribery and corruption. And you may even have the audacity to write a book about those who are doing it. This is why the older men become, the more silent they become. Because there is something they learn with time. That this life bar, at the end of it all, it is God. Is someone learning? Now you will understand why Jesus said in your prayer, do not forget to bring this. Deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Why will there be an attack over your car when there is no car there? I'm not being sarcastic now. Are we together now? Yes. There are many believers today who believe that they have attained unto a spiritual state that has magically immune them from certain things. No, the flesh is lying low, quietly, allowing you, do you know, now let me speak a bit of biology. It is said a woman from age 12 or 13 or so has the potential to give birth, but a woman can stand even at age 40 and her womb is there and you will never see pregnancy because the condition that allows that pregnancy has not yet been engaged. Is that true? As soon as that woman takes in seed, immediately you will see that that quiet, that, that pregnancy that has the potential for it had always been there. Same thing happens with a man. This is how the flesh is. There is something the flesh is waiting for to activate it, operation. And the unemployment issue has helped the flesh to lie quiet so you can believe that I am fine and I am free. Are we together? There is a certain level of increase and influence that if it has not yet come, oh Jesus, 
for as long as you are still a baby even though you are the word incarnate no problem but as long as the news of your arrival got to Herod Herod said who did you say go and search the archives for me is there such and such a prophecy he said let me know where that child is so that I will come do you know that because of the arrival of Jesus many women lost their children does that look like a savior what kind of a savior whose arrival makes the death of there was a lamentation in Rama many people died because a gift that will save the world arrived whoever told you that good things don't create conflict whoever told you that the arrival of glorious things will not bring contention from hell are we together now yes this is a very powerful teaching Jesus arrives if you were the woman who lost your child would you want to see Jesus and they told you prophetically that this is the Savior you want to save my life and you killed my child by your arrival what a Savior how about Mary the moment it was announced in the spirit hail Mary that salutation came and he said you are favored the next thing that followed her life was trouble and controversy she was about to lose Joseph are we together and then the scribes and the Pharisees came just confess who is the father of this child a ghost you must be stupid you are playing with our intelligence on top of the fact that you have brought shame to your husband and our family I'm an innocent young virgin we do not believe that ladies and gentlemen open doors come with challenges that is the reason why men must be prepared to attain stature in the spirit. There are many doors that it is God that closed by himself because you have been weighed in the spirit and God has seen that if that door is open, then left the bankruptcy of spiritual intelligence and stamina, you will die because a door opened. So he will close the door as an act of his mercy and quickly send you to men and women who would midwife your growth until you attain stature in the spirit and then that door will be opened. Are we together? You hear that in a family, the last person who became a pastor got mad after a crusade. You laughed hysterically and say, how can a man finish preaching and then be mad? And now you don't know anything about the dynamics of liberty. You have not learned that much. And then you wanted to go and organize a crusade in the same village. And you find out that the more you pray, the more the crusade is not holding. Don't force it. God is saying, listen, young man, it is true that Christ died, but we rise through light. You do not understand the ancient powers and the altars that have pegged their relevance in that land. You come in like Paul and just believe you dislodge darkness without spiritual intelligence. You will wake up with half of you not waking up. Many, many people have not followed the protocol of the spirit and they've barged into open doors arbitrarily to their pain. To their peril there are temptations you have no business going through for instance is it not when you are a big man that you now begin to fight for titles you didn't call me apostle joshua selman do you know who i am if you were a brother in the wilderness somewhere any name they call you even if they say yes you will answer but now that the door has been opened and you are a great man apostle joshua selman it is amazing to know that there is a whole industry that is built around ego because the higher you rise some unnecessary things become necessary so much that an industry was built around it if you are learning say amen, amen. <laughs> some of you are praying and say god close that door i'm not i don't even want to get <laughs> you must pass through the door in the name of jesus hallelujah I remember one gentleman who came one time I don't know if he was here or he was in Zaria and he just brought a poster he said he was taking a step of faith he saw it in a dream he wanted to go and hold a crusade in a stadium in his place and I looked at him with compassion I said my friend God doesn't work like this huh just take it easy be faithful in your prayer group where you and he was determined I know what I had I said okay God go with you you see here. Eh? sometimes it's very good to allow life itself to be able to help it's only that sometimes the casualties become so much even if you survive you will not have the strength again are we together yes. 
battles that come as a result of growth. Let's tie a few things now. So the Bible says that the flesh is a big hindrance. When doors are open, I define flesh as the vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. The vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. The vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. And the Bible says it can be activated. It can be activated in the presence of plenty. It can be activated in the presence of abundance. Watch this. Jesus is teaching in a crusade and there are hungry people who are tarried there for three days. And now they were hungry and a responsible father would say, um, let them sit. I'm about to feed them with bread. He got five loaves, two fish, multiplied it and gave it to them. Notice what began to happen. The moment they were getting satisfied, lawlessness came in. For as long as they were hungry, they sat quietly as they shared the bread. The moment they started becoming satisfied, they started throwing remnants of the bread on the ground. And after they left, Jesus quietly said, go around, pack what they have thrown. And they found out they had wasted 12 baskets full. You will not waste bread if you are hungry. But when you eat, you can now begin to waste because there is no need again. For as long as the nation of Israel were in need of a savior and deliverance, they would listen to everything Moses would say. But as soon as they crossed the Red Sea and attained unto a place of liberty, Moses went up to receive the commandments and he returns back to find idol worshippers who had suddenly changed. They had forced Aaron to build a golden calf and they began to bow and worship how short a time was it from their exodus that they had now forgotten that's what happens to men in the presence of abundance give us this day our daily bread then it does not stop there he said now pay attention to what comes along daily bread when you receive daily bread then he says lead us not into temptation temptation always follows daily bread and then he says deliver us from evil hallelujah there are groups and associations you may never know exist until you rise to certain realms in life are we together now you have become a ceo you don't drink you don't smoke you love god but you have attained a position of growth and honor where you are invited for an executive meeting and the nature of that meeting demands global leaders to join you and there are certain professional practices that may corrupt your conviction but it is part of the modus operandi of that level of living the courage it will take to stand and say no will take fasting and prayer for you to be able to administer it because there are implications when you make the people feel stupid because of your faith are we together now yes there are many people who do not understand you get into a system where corruption is systemic it's not about your personal desire you met a design like that and your contribution is only part of the design how do you now fight that overall system you can fight an individual, but fighting systems are very difficult. Are we together now? Yes. You never knew that there was anger and frustration in you until God gave you large membership and you are preaching, people are saying amen, and nobody comes to say, Apostle, God bless you. I'm not saying you should give me money, please. I'm just using it as an example. And everybody just meets you and says, your sermon was powerful while you are trekking back home. Then you realize that that pain is in your heart. Remember, you said you don't have any business with the cares of this world. Your wife wakes you and says, is this how we are going to continue? When I married you, I knew what you told me God said. What is this thing we are seeing? That's when you will stand up and know that on a Sunday morning, you don't have a sermon because of anger. Not because you could not prepare. You are beginning to hate the people God sent you to because you don't even know what kind of stiff neck. Now you understand Moses' anger. And you will know why in spite of his anger, God still called him the meekest man. God rates people based on the pressures that are on them and the level of righteousness that oozes out in the midst of that pressure. Are we together? A woman who has eight children and no husband plus five other relatives that were added to her 
and she prays for only 30 minutes a day and she's faithful in it you can laugh at her because all your supplies come free you can lock yourself for three days and come out into supplies that are prepared and you will find out that God seems to honor that woman because he's rating her based on the realities that are there and her press to love God in spite of what is available is someone learning now this is very very powerful There are vulnerabilities that come when we grow. Listen, when you know this, huh, the higher you rise, the more humble you become. I've had the honor and the privilege of relating with the fathers of faith in this nation, and I am amazed at the level of humility and brokenness within them. You would think they were such a weak people, but these people are powerful in the spirit. Something, there is an education that experience in partnership with the spirit has brought to them that they have understood that, listen, it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but in truth it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know I found out that many men who become angry fathers, angry mothers were not born like that? Are we together? When you have five children, everything is rising except your salary. School fees is rising. Trouble is rising. Relatives are being added now. Somebody just calls you from nowhere and says, are you not aware we are related? Help me and pay my school fees. I'm not aware. I was never told that I have any cousin from anywhere say so, well just to inform you that i am your cousin i've told you you are our elder brother and since our parents are not there you are the new father we know responsibilities come and you find out that the man begins to get to his wife and children and sometimes the young children say why is daddy changing he will reset back in old age but for that as far as that reality is happening you find out that there are people who become things that they were not let me tell you, it's because the flesh was lying quietly, waiting for opportunities to come up. Are we together now? Yes. Who would have imagined, ladies and gentlemen, that Solomon was a murderer within, I mean, uh, David was a murderer within him. David, if you saw David, the young boy, who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a pastor? Who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a husband? You would have seen David, David epitomized the prayer point of every woman. And yet there was a murderer locked up in that young boy. But the murderer could not manifest. He could only kill animals. But you didn't know he could kill men too. One day when kings went for war, the man was roaming around his palace. And then he saw Vashti. That was the time for flesh to come out. He went so far to write a letter and gave Uriah, go and die. This is by my hand. And you thought that after Uriah died, you would say, okay, that's all right. He's still, I hope you know that's how Solomon came. Hmm. The question is, when you understand this, you now begin to pray the prayer of the psalmist, search my heart, O God and know my thoughts it says and if you find out that there is any wickedness within me lead me to the way everlasting someone shall deliver us from evil, from evil. hallelujah you never know as a man of god that you like money until god brings a billionaire as a son and he says papa or man of god or apostle what do you want just speak and it will be done and God said, don't say anything. Say, God, God forbid. I've suffered in this life. You are the one fighting my own progress now. I've preached, I've done it. Now it's my own time to rest. You said there remained a rest for the people of God. Now, When you had 100,000 home and abroad, God said, give it. You said, yes, Lord. In one word, you gave it. Now you have 10, 20 million and God said, give everything. You know, I, I'm, I, I know how God speaks. God cannot be this, this wicked. Knowing the reality of Nigeria to ask me, no, it can't be God. I reject that spirit. Satan appears as an angel of light. I reject that light. 
And when you finish, because God speaks once, you will hear twice. God will use every verification system you want. I am the one saying it. May you be delivered. Amen. Now, very quickly, so that we can pray. There is a biblical requirement for accessing deliverance from God. If it is God you seek deliverance from, there is a condition that all men are mandated to assume. There is a posture that you must attain unto in the spirit in order to access deliverance from God. And that posture is humility and submission. Please write it down. Deliverance in the kingdom and in the spirit is only for men and women who understand the power of humility and understand the power of submission. You must come to a point where you acknowledge the reality of your human limitation outside of the help and the mercies of God. It is called brokenness in one word. First Peter chapter 5, please, from verse 6 and 7. First Peter 5, 6 and 7. Please write it and look up. The Bible says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Uh -huh. Casting all your cares upon him because he cared for you. Are we together? Do you have that down? James 4, 7. James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God submit yourself to god then he says resist the devil don't come and resist the devil when you are not submitted to god he says resist the devil and he will flee your submission first your humility first you want to access deliverance you must come to a point where you admit and acknowledge that outside of the help of the mighty god i do not even know the tendencies that are enshrined in my own heart and you must be able to uh, to admit it unashamedly that except god helps me vain is the help of man including my own self is someone learning now this is very powerful Many people want to experience that deliverance from God, but they are yet to come to a recognition that they are insufficient in themselves. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says not that we are sufficient of ourselves. He says our sufficiency is of God. What is sufficiency? The ability to always rise to the occasion. The ability to be without disappointment. You always are able to rise to the occasion. He said, when you see that we are always full of capacity, it is not as though we attained it by our own power. We have outsourced a technology through our brokenness where we draw strength from God. Humility and submission. Listen to me. You want to experience the reality of that scripture to be delivered from evil? I can tell you, that humility and submission to the governing authority of the Christ is a fundamental requirement if you will experience perpetual deliverance. Are we together? The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, not a man, the righteous run neck to it. You first have to admit that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that until you run to it, you are not saved. We live in a world where it's marketable to be proud, it's marketable to sound self-sufficient, as though outside of the assistance of the Christ, we are able to make it on our own and by ourselves. Even Jesus Christ said, I can of my own do nothing. Is that in your Bible? I can. He declared his vulnerability without fear and without shame. Now, please write this down. Deliverance from God is based on a response system. We are going to pray now. Deliverance, obtaining deliverance from God is based on a response system. That means deliverance does not just come except it is a response. Number one, deliverance comes as a response to a cry for mercy. Please write it down. Deliverance comes to the saints from God 
as a response to a cry for mercy. I said deliverance from God is based on a response system. Every time you see deliverance in the earth, it came as a response. Something, there was a reaction from the earth and then God responded to it. A response to a cry for mercy. Lamentations 3.22. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Because his compassions fail not. A response to a cry for mercy. There is something that always happens to the believer who knows how to cry to God for mercy. In Luke chapter 18 from verse 35. Luke chapter 18, please, from verse 35. The Bible says, and it came to pass, the story of blind Bartimaeus, that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat at the wayside begging. 36 now. And hearing the multitudes pass by, he asked what it meant. Next verse. The Bible says, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by, uh -huh, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This is very powerful. Next verse. And the Bible says, And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. God will always respond to the cry of mercy. Next verse. Reading to 43. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come, he asked him, uh -huh, saying, What will thou that I do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Two more verses. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Verse 3, Immediately he received his sight. Did you know that Jesus would have just passed and left that person like that? And his condition would have looked like it was the will of God for him to be left there. But he understood that in the economy of God, there is daily bread for everyone. And that you can place a demand even through the cry of mercy. Thou son of David, he said, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Paul was teaching us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. He says that we may obtain mercy. You don't obtain mercy where you are. You must take the step to come boldly to the throne of grace by faith. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Deliverance from God comes to the believer as a response to a cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. Thou son of David, have mercy upon my family. Have mercy upon my health. Have mercy upon my job. We have taught for a long time in the body of Christ that mercy is for sinners. So most people do not understand the potential of mercy because they don't want to make it look like they are sinners. What are you saying mercy for? Have you done something wrong? Mercy is a mystery in the kingdom. He said above the mercy seat, below the, below the mess, above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you. God meets men at the point of mercy. Most of us do not understand the power of God's mercy. If you can, please do listen to my teachings on mercy. I have taught extensively about mercy. The Bible tells us of the prodigal son that this gentleman began to deteriorate and deplete until. He who was once royalty with his father had now been reduced to feed with swine. Here's what he said. The Bible says he came to himself and he said, How many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto you, Father, I have sinned against you. You see brokenness there? And against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. Then the Bible says he got up and then he started going. Notice he never met the father at home. Because once you take the step, God will always meet you at the point of your obedience. It was as though the father was waiting for him to take that step. And then he met him. 
There are many people today who have experienced mighty deliverance from God. Ten people can be in the same situation, financially, ministerially, and a few of them will come out as if the devil does not exist because somewhere in that equation, someone knew how to cry for mercy. Lord, if you, I know that I do not understand financial principles to fund this ministry with integrity, but I cry that you are the God of heaven and because your mercies are new every morning, show me mercy. And that person who may not even know the dynamics of financial prosperity, someone can and just call him and say God said I should give you a billion and you match the person with the results and they don't add up because mercy has spoken may someone be a beneficiary of the mercy of God in the name of Jesus Christ mercy a response to the cry for mercy when I go to God in prayer, praying for myself and this ministry, I've told you, I don't go to God like a man of God coming to meet a colleague in ministry. I go to him expressing, not out of a standpoint of condemnation, but the depth of my ignorance. Lord, I do not know so many things. You have granted me the grace to come this far. I pray that your mercy will be and remain at the corridors of my destiny. Because outside of your mercy, this world is vicious. Outside of the mercy of God, it takes mercy before favor arrives. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. So the time for favor, the first thing you look for is mercy first, before the favor. Are we together? Yes. The mercy of God. There are many easy things that have become hard because we are still standing by our own strength. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. With all your heart, it says, and lean not unto your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 is a warning to men. Be not wise in your own eyes, it says, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. Father, it is by your mercy I'll be able to raise this child. Not I know I will raise my child. God forbid that my child becomes an armed robber. You know how many sincere, serious missionaries who invested in raising other people, when it got to their own children, everything you know to mentor a child properly, they did. And the child still became an armed robber. How do you explain Judas being mentored by Jesus? How do you explain Satan as Jesus' creation becoming Satan? Are we together now? You would think an excellent God should be so flawless in his creation and his all-knowing ability should have pre-informed him that somewhere along the economy of his creation, there could be a possibility he would have programmed that in creating them. Yet a third of the angels fell, and he still remains God. Yet Satan, his creation, has become the act enemy of his program and his purposes today. Judas, the one who was responsible for the bag, lost three things i've taught you he lost the money he lost his place his bishopric and he lost his life ladies and gentlemen i submit to you that it is by the mercy of god that we thrive and excel you are in ministry here you are in business i want you to know that you must perpetually walk in the consciousness that all we are and all that we have is by and large a product of God's mercy. Hallelujah. I told you about a gentleman years ago. This guy fasted. That's the longest I've seen that I know. He fasted for 400 days, six to six. 400 days. I wrapped up the last day with him. And after that guy wrapped it up, he started suffering. And now you are wondering, I'm looking at my life and say, ah, if it is by the investment of spiritual things, some of us should not be where we are. But Lord, for your mercy. You see, the awareness of God, the administration of God's mercy, is what brings thanksgiving, genuine thanksgiving. 
Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? There are many of us, based on the kind of training you gave your children, your children should almost be, respectfully speaking, they should not attain unto the level they now have. But the mercy of God caused that when your children left you, God brought prophets and apostles to cover them. They served as midwives so that the adults you now have are not the children. The trajectory of your training should not produce those kind of champions. But the mercy of God. The mercy of God. Some of you, you saw idols eat up your family members. And it's not like you were more spiritual. One of the ones that died was even a pastor. While you were an unbeliever. But God meandered you to a crusade. And here you are today standing. Where would I be? If you left me now. Where would I be? Mephibosheth, when you get to the palace, do not forget that you were that crippled young man at Lodebar. It took the mercy of God for David to bring you. So do not laugh at Ziba. Ziba had 15 sons and not one of them was favored. They were made to walk and serve Mephibosheth. He was a product of a wrong midwife. A midwife made a mistake at his birth and crippled him. He would have remained like that, but God showed him mercy. Mephibosheth, when they bring you to the palace, I know you can act pious, but when you stay a few weeks in the palace, do not allow the memory of where you came from to be so eroded that you lose touch. That was the mistake of Vashti. She forgot that the only reason why she was queen was that she married a king. Not because she was a warrior over 127 provinces. She only married a great man. That's what made her a great woman. And she now created a camp and an empire for herself outside of the influence of the king. And she lost her place. Esther was about to make the same mistake when Mordecai said, don't make that mistake. Haman is about to annihilate the Jews. And don't you sit there and act, don't act, you were a village girl in Shushan. Don't forget the purpose for your attaining that glory. Hear me, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when doors open, be ever conscious of the mercy of God. Do not allow the beauty of the palace to make you look down on others and forget that it was mercy that took you there. Man of God, do not celebrate your ministry and go around sarcastic and being sarcastic and insult people. Shame on this one, small church. Oh, you have forgotten that it takes many years for a building to rise, but in minutes that building can crumble. Listen carefully. You have now become a multi-millionaire. You have now become a billionaire. And you look at everybody and they are like pieces of rag. I'm reminding you that if you want to experience deliverance, you must know how to call for mercy and live in the atmosphere of mercy. My life today is a product of God's mercy. Look at me. This is all of me. There are some things that cannot be done by men except God assist a man. Nicodemus came to Jesus in John 3 by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are some results men cannot produce, ladies and gentlemen. And in the presence of this plenty, the tendency is that we want to savour the glory and make it look as, it, as though it came as a product of our intelligence. For as long as I am breathing, I will let the world know. It is true that he has helped us to pay our price in various places. But I tell you, it will be foolish of me to stand here and beat my chest to tell you everything you see is a reflection of intelligence. No. I'm 
the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy I'm the one say you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy I'm the one Years ago, I went somewhere and I went to preach for a man of God. And when I was done preaching, I was headed to his office and I saw a gentleman who was working as part of the protocol. He looked at me and I looked at him and I was in shock. Many years ago on campus, that guy used to be a very strong person, very vibrant and powerful. If you saw that gentleman, you would think he would explode in a global ministry within two years. And here was this, my dear brother, didn't seem like the best of states, seemed like someone who had been beaten by life and frustrated. I was almost tempted to say what happened. Then I remembered. Man, these guys were vibrant. When I say, you know what it means, campus vibrancy is... is is with the infancy of spiritual work. So you put your energy to it. You look beyond the hill. And poured your love. You look beyond the hill. You look beyond the hill. Sing, I'm the one, say. I'm the one. You are so. Hear me. Thank God for these great people that God has blessed me with. But I remember the crowd that was in Jesus' ministry. They were the same people who said crucify him. So the larger they are, the more the voices that can say crucify you. You will need to cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. And say, Lord, not by our righteousness, but it is by your grace. The, the, the deliverance power of God comes in response to a cry for mercy. Apostle, right now I do not even know. I am a man of God, but my family members have not eaten. Things have gone haywire in my life. What you need is the cry for mercy. You can cry the mercy of God to come and become a bailout system in your life. I can tell you this. Number two, let's hurry up because I want us to pray. Deliverance from God comes as a response to heartfelt prayer. Number one is a cry for mercy. Number two, heartfelt prayer. Deliverance from God comes in response to heartfelt prayer. Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus is speaking to Peter and the disciples. 26, 41. He says, watch and pray. We have a teaching on this later on because these two words capture a very deep mystery for surviving the evil of the times. He said, watch and pray. Watch is the product of intelligence and discernment. He says, when it has to do with your safety, there is a place for intelligence and discernment. Watch, be discerning, be vigilant, and then from the information you get from watching, you pray. You don't pray amiss when you watch. You watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. First Peter chapter 5, we read it earlier. Now let's do 8 and 9. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober and vigilant, he says, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. It says, whom resist steadfastly in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, this is not new. So there is a way of escape. You can resist him in the place of prayer. 
Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19, very powerful scripture. It says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Anything will turn to my salvation through your prayer. Anything at all. The challenges that now befall you as a result of open doors, they can be turned to your salvation like it happened at the prison. What was supposed to be a limitation to the apostles. Are we together now? Yes. Paul and Silas bound as a result of evangelism, as a result of promoting the purposes of God. The Bible says when they were tied there, eventually the jailer and all his family became saved. I know that this shall turn to my salvation. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but what looks like a, a dead end. You are saying, Lord, the troubles that came to my life was because I got this job. I want to speak to you that in the place of prayer, there is a technology that converts pain to glory. If you know how to manage pain. I don't watch a lot of TV, but there are times I watch Food Network. And sometimes there are competitions that they have and they give them food that has stayed overnight and they are expected to do something with that food and still produce a nice meal. Are we together? So they could give them maybe bread, food that has stayed and it is, they now start thinking of various ways and they can turn it, you would think it was freshly prepared food. That's how it is. Something that looks like a dead end programmed by Satan even the falling of the pit with prayer can become your advancement into Egypt. Even Potiphar's wife's trouble that led you to the prison can become the final bouncing point before you get to the palace. For I know that this shall turn for my salvation. Every time you are afflicted, according to James 5 and verse 13, it says, is anyone afflicted, let him pray I can tell you when you pray with understanding it sustains the ability to produce tremendous power in fact the Bible says in Mark now Mark um, what was the scripture verse 24 Mark 11 24 it says what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray there is a relationship between desire, prayer, receiving, and having. Desire, prayer, receiving, and having. I've told you that you can only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you cannot have it. Receiving is a spiritual technology. And then you have it as a manifestation. God is able to respond to men who travel in the place of prayer, you can access deliverance in the place of prayer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell you that you can pray your way out of many troubles. You can pray your way out of many troubles. The moment you begin to discern that the spiritual climate is unfavorable, maybe your job, maybe your business, maybe ministry, all kinds of things are happening. Your, your husband is sick, your child is sick, finance going down. You see, the signature of Satan is discernible. The Bible says the thief cometh not, John 10, 10, but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You can see his signature immediately. The word of God is the principal tool for discernment. You can see immediately, this is Satan. This is Satan. And you begin to pray. He gave us the prayer language as an advantage so that we do not walk with the limitations of the mind. The mind can catch up later on, but you can begin to engage in prayer, strategic prayer. It says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much. Luke 18 and verse 1, he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, he says to pray without ceasing, be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. The moment doors open, that is not the time for your prayer life to go down. That is not the time of laxity. 
do not get caught up with the delicacy of the palace that you forget to pray let me tell you how to command deliverance esther is in a dilemma right now because she needs to meet king ahasuerus and the ethics of kings those days were that if you if you step into the king's inner chamber without his invitation and he did not leave the golden censer you were dead immediately and he said mordecai i will go if i perish i perish but now is the time to engage all of us will be on prayer even with fasting we know what prayer can do i will go to meet the king and she stepped in to meet the king and the king said come he lifted the golden censer and that became the beginning of the process that would later become the destruction of mordecai of haman the lifting of mordecai and the salvation of god's people prayer is powerful can i tell you don't fold your arms and act like nothing is happening when darkness seems to loom around your life there are seasons in your life where you need dedicated time. You should be prayerful all the time. But let me tell you, there are moments in life and destiny, Kairos moments. I have taught you this. When seasons are about to change, there are many things that start happening to you. One is an unusual desire to give. Number two is an unusual desire to pray. These are indices that show you that you are finishing a season and you are entering a new one. When Jesus was about to go to the cross, from the communion table, he went straight to Gethsemane. And the Bible says he prayed, repeating the same words. Drew strength from there. And he says, I'm ready. Judas came with all the people and came and kissed him. And he was able to build the stamina to survive until he gave up his life on the cross. Can I tell you? If you turn aside in the day of battle, the spiritual diagnosis is that your strength is small. Not because victory is not possible. You need capacity in the spirit. I pray that God will raise CEOs that pray. I pray that God will raise preachers that pray. Pray for me. Pray for me is the plague of weak people. Yes, there is a place for intercession, but let me tell you, everybody who is rising must master the mysteries of the altar. You must know how to hold on to the horns of the altar until you command perpetual victory. There are certain burdens of leadership that come upon you if you do not know how to flog out the destinies of people in the place of prayer. You will raise a weak and a defeated people. Prayer is powerful. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekapos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.